Hello and welcome to Communication Connection. I'm your host, Terry Likes. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, in SEC country, the news always revolves around the sports world. And as a longtime educator, I certainly see a lot of students who would like to go into sports. So we're proud to welcome to the show today a proud 2000 alumnus, Marshall Harris, who's currently sports anchor and director at CBS2 in Chicago. Marshall, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back to your alma mater, at least virtually in this sense. Always a good always a good time to connect with you guys. Thanks so much for having me, Jerry. Well, we know that you are originally from Huntsville, Alabama, so logic might have said you could have gone to Alabama or Auburn. What brought you across state lines to become a Bulldog? I, I think, uh, number one, I, I didn't necessarily have Mississippi State on my radar, so to speak, when I first uh, was looking at, at colleges, but I was got familiar with them, of course, through their... Uh, Big trip to the Final Four in 1996. I was like, oh, that's 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 cool. That's that that's nice. And then, you know, I have a, a motto, Terry. Uh, if it's free, it's me. I ended up getting a, a full scholarship to Mississippi State, and I was like, this is this is this is destined. I came to visit the campus. Uh, beautiful time in Starkville, and I was like, I, I can definitely uh, see myself here. And um, just with the opportunities, as I went around and uh, checked out the student radio station, the student newspaper, the reflector. I was like, I could see myself being involved with some of the stuff. Um, and and that, that that's really what made my decision to say, you know what, goodbye, Alabama, hello, Mississippi. Well, and you certainly made the most of your opportunities here. I, it is certainly rare that two college roommates with, in this case, ambitions to work in the media have made it big. And your good friend, Ben Hart, who was on this show about a year ago, uh, again, roommates, you both worked at WMSV here on campus, and it was off to bigger and better things. But I know you reflect on those times with fond memories. Sure do. I mean, that was, it was crazy because, you know, Mississippi State, not necessarily known as as uh, maybe one of the premier communication programs at that time, um, we were just trying to get in where we fit in. And uh, I, the first day I was on campus, uh, I went around to uh, the reflector to WMSV, and I was just trying to figure out a way I could get involved. And there was nothing really for me at that time, but uh, the, the 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 man who was running uh, WMSV at the time, uh, Steve Ellis. Uh, he told me, uh, you know, leave me your information. If something comes up, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, and like two days later, he calls me and says, Has he, have you ever done play by play? I was like, no, but I can learn. And um, Starkville Academy, a local high school in town, needed someone to do radio play by play for their high school football games. And that was like my first endeavor into media. And I did that every week and I would, you know, go to Starkville Academy, travel, you know, schools are an hour, hour and a half, even two hours away that they would play in football. But uh, that's how I got my start. And uh, Steve kind of followed up with me and he said, hey, you can come and do the sports in the morning for us. And so I would get up at like 430 in the morning and, and uh, go and rip and read the sports and record sports broadcasts, sometimes do them live. Um, and that was kind of how I got my start. Now, Ben was on the other side of this. He was he was a little DJ. Uh, he had like a hip hop show at night, um, but we both worked at the radio station and that was just kind of like our thing. And even though we worked on in opposite ends of the spectrum, it was amazing just to have that experience and say, hey, you can do this thing. It, there's nothing you can learn about it in class. But I always tell people, you know, we talk about, you know, the, the teaching and the theory of things, but I'm all about the practicum. And I think anybody who wants to get into this business needs to learn the quicker you can get involved with the practicum of it the better off you'll be. And I should add that your good friend Ben Hart is now a general manager of a TV station in Savannah, Georgia. So both of you have hit it big and we're very proud of all of your accomplishments. So working at WMSV here on campus, later now in Chicago, fill in the gaps in between. I know that a media career can often be like climbing a ladder. There are various rungs along the way, or to use the sports analogy, uh, let's say, for example, minor league baseball, you have to work your way up to the big leagues. Tell us about your career path. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because, you know, people are like, oh, you work in Chicago. That's cool. That's great. It's like, I mean, I didn't just like start working in Chicago straight out of school. Sometimes they think like if they're not familiar with the industry, that that's what happens. But, you know, I got my start uh, when I was a junior in college, got my first uh, full time job at, actually down the road, about 15 minutes away at WCBI in Columbus, Mississippi. I was the uh, I was a, a part time photographer who transitioned into uh, a guy who was doing reporting once a week during the summer because things are slow at that time. They just need content. 
Um, and I would one man band, um, the forerunner of the uh, current MMJ, uh, where I would shoot my own stuff, edit my own stuff, and then uh, shoot my own stand ups a lot of the time. Um, and then I went from WCBI to my hometown of Huntsville, Alabama, worked there for two years. And then I worked, uh, after I did that, I went to uh, WKRC in Cincinnati, the CBS affiliate there. <laughs> and then uh, I worked there for two years. And then I got what I consider my big break, which is working at an all sports network. That was my goal is like, by the time I get 30, I want to work at a regional or national all sports network. So I was 27 years old working in Pittsburgh at what was then Fox sports net Pittsburgh, covering the pirates and the penguins sideline reporting for them, hosting pre and post game shows, did that for two years. And then I moved to Philadelphia where I worked for 11 years, uh, working as the pre and post game host for the Sixers and the Phillies primarily and doing a lot of different things. Got to cover the Olympics while I was there. Um, in 2012 in London. And after I got done there, I moved to Sacramento, California, and I took a foray into management, if you will, because uh, there was a TV station, the CBS affiliate there, which did not have a sports department for about 10 years, but they wanted to relaunch sports because they felt like sports could make a lot of money for the station. And it can, we proved that because we launched a sports department, launched half hour, hour long shows, um, and did that for two and a half years before ending up in Chicago here as a sports director, where we're kind of doing the same type of uh, renaissance thing with uh, creating more programming uh, for the local station. Well, you've certainly kept the moving companies in business over the years. That's, that's a lot on your resume, certainly, but great experience along the way. And I know you like sharing those stories with students. So I know that you mentioned earlier, you're, you're all about the practical experience so from a student perspective. And I know that you like to give back to the students. Uh, internships you feel are key and were certainly key to you getting your foothold into this industry. Yeah, and, and they, they're, they're not only big, but they're, they're so important because it's a little bit about what you're learning to do, which let's be honest, you know, students now have a huge advantage over me. Like when I got that job at WCBI when I was a junior in college, I really got the job just so I could work on my resume reel. Like I needed tape to get a job and that was access to equipment. Now, back then we didn't have, you know, phones where you can just shoot yourself doing things. You can go on a computer and record yourself. Like you're talking to me right now while I'm on my computer. Um, kids know how to edit because they use TikTok and Instagram reels. They already know how to do the basics of editing. I had to learn all that stuff in class and then go put it into practice um, through my internships. And I, I worked every summer. I would always have an internship or two. Um, back in my hometown of Huntsville, Alabama, I interned at the NBC station twice the ABC station in between that. Um, I was always working at a radio station, um, the uh, urban R&B station in Huntsville, Alabama, um, WEUP. They let me do sports live in the mornings with them, um, kind of what I was doing at WMSV, but at a commercial radio station. And that's how I got my start, my confidence, my footing. But really today, kids can just get on a computer and they can vlog, they can write, they can blog, they can uh, do... Uh, Facebook lives, they can do Instagram lives. There's just so many different ways you can work on your craft just in, from a practical standpoint that we couldn't do when I was coming out of school. So I always had an internship. Now, what, what's important about those internships still today is the networking aspect of it. I always tell people um, getting a job is comes down to what you can do and who you know, and most definitely not in that order. You know, a lot of people can get a job because of who they know. And then once you get that job, what you can do will keep you there and advance you in whatever your goals are. So I think internships are so important. Um, John Ford, who was uh, my my kind of advisor when I was at, at Mississippi State, I worked out a thing with him where, you know, technically you're not supposed to do internships unless you're getting college credit for it. This is back before interns got paid. Uh, but we, we would just do independent studies that would make up for the fact that I had an internship so I could tell the people I was interning for, hey, look, I'm getting college credit. It's just three hours of independent study. I remember years ago, a former NBC correspondent, Bob Dotson, was trying to explain to his grandmother uh, that he doesn't work just three minutes a day because she only sees him on the air for three minutes. So you have to be certainly a multimedia producer as far as host, anchor, writer, editor, videographer. Tell us a little bit about a day in the life of a Chicago TV sports anchor and director. It, it really just depends on what's going on that day. I'll give you an example. Uh, we had the NBA draft and uh, for that, I was out at the Bulls uh, practice facility. So I had my laptop 
and I go out and I'm on my computer logging into iNews, which is the system that we use to uh, write scripts and stuff. And I'm writing my scripts for a four o'clock live hit, a five o'clock live hit, a six o'clock live hit. Um, sometimes I'll edit video. I was out in the field, so it's harder to do that when you're out in the field. So a producer back at the station is, is handling all of that. And then I do that, do all my live shots. Then I go back to the station and we got to get ready for the 10 o'clock show in which we find out who the Bulls actually draft. Plus, there's uh, highlights to cut. The Cubs, the White Sox are playing. And just kind of reading up on that, following those games, uh, th that's like my most recent experience I can tell you about. But some days you go in and you're out in the field and it's like, okay, I got to do this, uh, write this, edit this, cut this. Um, I, I recently sat down with um, rapper turned actor turned entrepreneur uh, Ice Cube. So I go and meet him at like 11 o'clock at his hotel, do a one-on-one -on -one interview with him. Uh, go back to the station, log that, edit it, turn it around into a two minute package, um, talking about the, the, resu the resumption of the big three basketball tour, half court professional basketball league, and just what he wants to do with that. So cool opportunities to meet, interview, interesting people from uh, all walks of life that are connected to sports. And so my day can be crazy. They can be bland, it depends on what's going on any given day. And in Chicago, it's a big city with lots of teams. So tons of stuff going on all the time. I'm sure you keep up with your alma mater and, and watch the SEC because most would say it's the best conference in the country. So lots of things are happening. Uh, you know, name, image, and likeness. The transfer portal have certainly shaked up the, uh, shaken up the sports world. And also you've got Texas and Oklahoma soon joining the conference. Your thoughts in our final moments here about some of these major changes uh, concerning your alma mater. Well, the, the NIL thing is one of those things where I saw it coming, we all did, but like the practical, how was it going to play out? It's kind of still taking shape. And I'm really curious what the NCAA is or isn't going to do about this and what the NCAA isn't, isn't going to do about football in general. I can see the SEC being that kind of leader that says, we're going to kind of dismantle this old model. We have a super conference with the addition of Texas and Oklahoma the, the, the bad news is that just means more teams that are higher profile than Mississippi State and we get the scraps when it comes to recruiting. But we'll, we'll see how all that plays out. But I am interested to see um, what direction we go with the college football playoff in particular. I think it is eventually going to go to a 12-team field, and that's going to be interesting because maybe a Mississippi State has a great year like when Dak Prescott was the quarterback and they could sneak into the college football playoff. I think that's the equity that – schools are looking for all over the country. So I'm interested to see how it plays out like everyone else. And I'm interested to see how big the money gets for that NIL and how it's regulated because boosters can basically be like, hey, I own this company. All of you guys get this money from my company and that fulfills the NIL and everybody's getting paid and everybody's happy, but everybody can't do that. So I'm interested to see how that plays out in the next five years or so. Marshall Harris has been our guest. Thank you so much for joining us from Chicago and CBS2. We're very happy for all of your success. And we thank you for watching us here on Communication Connection. We'll see you next time. I'm Terry Likes.